Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we appreciate everybody coming in. Oh, you might have to mute. Do we <laughs> switch over to you? <laughs> Ash, I am here with uh, our resident open house expert, Ash Gale, and uh, we are really excited today to talk to you guys about open houses. Uh, this came up from a, a couple of conversations and some trainings that Ash and I had had before. Uh, he had a, if you haven't seen it yet on our YouTube channel, he's got a fantastic uh, uh, YouTube training session about open houses and all the business side of that uh, as a realtor, uh, you know, from that perspective. And then I had a couple of classes about setting up, you know, the technology for those, uh, the landing pages and smart plans, et cetera. And uh, one of the things we're trying to do this summer is get more collaborative trainings going on. So I uh, just thought it was a great idea to kind of combine those two things together and uh, show you guys the ins and outs. So I uh, appreciate everybody coming. Uh, Ash, you want to say anything? Uh, no, uh, not, not much, Dave. Um, thanks for having me. And um, hopefully this is, uh, uh, adds to everyone's businesses and uh, works uh, the command technology in with uh, doing successful open houses. Awesome. So again, give me just a sec. I've got a, a PowerPoint here we're going to walk through. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you guys. And I will pull that up. And as we walk through this, what we're basically going to do today is uh, Ash is kind of going to walk you guys through the, uh, the uh, like I said, the uh, business side of that and the realtor side of that. And as we get to certain points, uh, I'm going to chime in because we're literally teach you the technology for doing these things uh, as we go along. So hopefully you have some, uh, some fun here today. So uh, give me one sec to get that thing maximized. And... All right, but we're ready to roll. All right, so um, the main thing of working command is um, using the technology. And one thing that uh, I've worked on uh, hard over the last three years is to move away from uh, working harder, which is old school in uh, real estate, to uh, working smarter and being a tech enabled agent. And that's what really Gary Keller is really trying to work with, with uh, everything in command. So um, in, in doing that, um, what you're gonna learn here with, um, uh, with uh, David and I will be adding the technology into your open house. Now, the first thing is um, why do we actually hold an open house? Um, the first thing is to sell the actually house that you're actually have, having held open. The second is to lead generate for listings. There'll be a couple of things here that we'll be talking about in designs that will help you with that. Um, then the third one is lead generation for buyers. Um, now, as far as uh, smart plans go that David will tell you about, they will both assist in listings and buyers. And there's certain questions that I ask uh, of uh, attendees to the open house that you'll be able to find out which one they are without them uh, actually telling you. And then um, the fourth thing is to build your database. Now that's really what David is gonna be diving in here for uh, with the smart plans, because your smart plans don't only go for that one open house. If you find out the subdivision that they live in, uh, you can set them up on smart plans for the, uh, the bi-weekly uh, bi or monthly uh, neighborhood uh, nature plan. Um, um, the, the neighborhood um, updates. Uh, so they're building a database out of the open house really is all encompassing. And then when you add it together, what's in command, that's working smarter. And there are ways to find out inside command whether people are actually tapping on and looking at um, being active uh, on your re website. And that's what David Wolf go further into. So. Um, so then really with, with command, you're showing your professionalism as the local real estate specialist. Um, now, when, when you've got people coming into uh, your open houses, 70% um, of buyer sellers will hire the first agent that they meet. So they want that first agent to be able to add to their buying or selling experience. Now you've got to realize that 80% of open house guests are truly not properly represented. Um, the, the one thing that I don't do is I don't ask them if they are working with a, a realtor. Um, I just take uh, the, um, the initiative and show them how good I am. If they're working with a realtor, if they've got a buyer's agreement, they will stick with them. And I totally uh, understand that. So when, we, when you're looking at those odds, uh, you have a one in two chance to be their local real estate specialist when they come into your open house. 
So that's great statistics to, uh, to work with. Uh, as I said before, be the professional, add value, show your strength, um, tell a story at all times. Um, people love to hear stories, whether they, majority of them, yes, they want to hear successful stories, and especially in this difficult market. Um, if you've got different strategies or tactics that you've used to get an offer over the line, there people will stand in front of you for 10 minutes to listen to it. Even if they're working with another agent, that's fine, but I'm showing that I'm adding value. Um, so in doing your um, open houses, um, you, you really have to be committed to three things. First of all, you've got to be willing to do them. Uh, when I first started out in my first 12 months, uh, I was on a team. I am on a team, a strong team. Um, we would, I was doing four open houses a week. And the first week a home was listed, I was even doing an afternoon listing on a Wednesday, Thursday or Friday, which were highly successful. You have to believe in your processes and your systems. The system I've got is a two-week system and uh, it's found to be highly um, successful for myself. Um, I have tinkered with it over now two and a half years. Um, and I'd expect yourselves to do something that would fit in with your lifestyle as well. Because my program is a full 14 day program. No one wants to work 14 days, especially when I first started off, I was working 20, 24 hours on weekends. Um, yeah, during the week, you could take your time off. And Friday was generally the day, and you'll see that on my system. Now, the main thing here is the follow up and the strategy to your follow up. That's what David will be talking about more about uh, this, the smart plans. Yes, two and a half years ago when I started this up, um, command was nowhere near at the strength that it is now. So that's why David and I really thought about incorporating my two week plan with what he can add to it uh, now. And I'm even excited to see what he does um, that can add it to my, to my whole two week program. Okay, so just to give you a quick um, summary of my history, um, you'll see the first year, um, yeah, look, I did most probably 80% of my work straight out of open houses. People I'd never met before um, coming into my open house. Um, the second week, second year, uh, we started buying uh, leads on uh, Boomtown. Um, Barbara's uh, got a strong uh, letter, um, mail out process. Um, that's successful too. So my 80% then ended up uh, dropping down to around about 66, 70%. And you've got to understand open houses are just like other uh, any other lead generation. It is a numbers game. I, I was spending, yeah, eight to 10 hours a week on open houses for my first year. Enormous success. And that's where if you're doing eight to 10 hours lead generation, whether it be on Boomtown, Brevity, Command, Facebook, or where it be. Um, yeah, those, those numbers should um, keep falling through to you, as long as you're doing that 10 hours per week. Okay, so week one, uh, Monday, I'll just quickly go through this, because uh, I'd like to get on to what David can do uh, rather quickly. Uh, week one, Monday, it's a two week rolling, so the Mondays overlap, uh, assign open houses for the following weekend. Uh, the second, one, second week is confirm open houses, sent open questionnaire. You'll see on the right there, that's what the Gale Group does. Um, you call FISBOs and expires around your open houses. You try and make appointments for them because when you're in your open house, the inventory of market uh, open, of homes on the market in your area should not, not only be listed to the MLS, active. Uh, expires. Yeah, you can convert them. I'm actually working with one at the moment that's an expired. Um, so your, your knowledge of being the local residential specialist, if people want to move into the resident, the, the subdivision of Dublinshire, if you can talk to them about everything about other homes that even aren't on the market, what I say is off markets, they're going to go with you. They're going to say, geez, you're giving me an experience that no other realtor has discussed. Okay, so then... Uh, you check that uh, the open house is posted in the MLS and you put, make sure the riders are in place for the, for the week or for the Wednesday or for the weekend. Okay, then on to the Wednesday. Um, you produce a two-sided flyer. Uh, you view, view homes if you're doing a Wednesday open house. Um, you door knock in the area. 
Now, door knocking, David will show you what my two-sided flyer is. Highly successful in the first week of the listing. It is, it is a little bit old school, but you've got to be out there talking to people and selling your story, telling your story to people for them to be interested in. If you're not talking to people, um, if you're not asking questions, um, that is a strong part of what lead generation definitely should be in the first year. And then on, on the Wednesday, you set Thursday appointments to view homes. Now, these are actives that are homes that are similar to yours in the same subdivision or the same school area and, and FISBOs and expires again. And then you may have your open house to do five to seven. Now, I, I strongly suggest during summer, you do open houses on five to seven during the week. And in winter, do them from four till six. Okay, so here's the open house flyer that we do. It's two-sided. Um, uh, what you'll see is one side is the description with myself. Uh, there's the other side is uh, the invitation to friends and neighbours. The main thing oh, I, I do, I write invitation to friends and neighbours or welcome is because sometimes you may have some homes that have no soliciting uh, on the front door. Um, I will still just knock on the door and I'll generally leave this inside their door handle. And, and if someone uh, answers, I'll just say, I've, I've just left some information that may be beneficial for you for maybe some increase of traffic over the weekend. Um, maybe even hope to see you. So I do door knock on everyone because you've got to understand that that person will have somewhere to sell in the future. And if they can see that you're doing something that no other agent does, they're going to call you. They may even be thinking, I'm going to sell in three months, four months time. I don't have a realtor. Let's go and do an interview with this person. So, David, do you want to talk about the designs on, um, on that flyer? Yep, absolutely. Thanks, uh, Ash. Uh, gang, uh, gang, 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 Sorry, I had that open and then the page crashed on me. And what we're going to do, I, I want to be able to show you uh, really in a bigger picture of what Ash has been talking about. There's a lot of things that you can do on the forefront of the side uh, of doing an open house. Uh, a couple of these we're actually going to go in and then go through like literally designing them from scratch, the landing page and the smart plan. Uh, some of these I just want to get a chance to show you so that you can see that you're there. So what he was bringing up is this two-sided flyer. So I'm in command right now. If you go down here to uh, the third uh, applet from the bottom, you're going to see your design area. Um, I, you can do that as a print, but some of the other things that you can do, I want to just kind of show you the whole library of things you can do on open house the, uh, as far as all the different templates that are available. So Ash is a great system in place. It's obviously been very successful for him. Uh, here's some other things that you do, can do to kind of preempt uh, that open house. So I'm going to go into print designs for now. And these would be ones that you can actually design and print out. That'll take us over to the Wee brand called the KW Wee brand library. And this is where all of our design templates are located uh, within command. Okay. Uh, you can notice, uh, can you share? Oh, sorry. Sorry, guys. I thought I had done that. Hang on. Let me do that again. Thank you. Can everybody see that okay now, hopefully? There we go. I see it coming up on my phone now. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, thanks, Christine. Okay, so uh, if you notice over on the uh, on the left hand side, you've got all these different uh, categories: lead generation, buyers, etc., business basics, etc. Okay, under your listings, you're going to see an area or category called open house. Okay, and when I go here, there are gang the, the we brand library is up over 1,500 different templates. Now, I, I've had some agents tell me, you know, oh, you're the command guy. You're just going to try and convince me to use command, gang. That's not my job here. My job here is to make sure that you have the technology in your wheelhouse that serves you and your team well, okay? Uh, command is free, that's great for a lot of agents, but uh, you know you do have to use it at a minimum to do your compliance paperwork. So my job really is to say, okay, well, if you have other technology or using other vendors, MailChimp or you know some of the other things, guys, that's great. However, uh, you know if you're designing on Canva rather than here in the WeBrand library, that's okay too, but you can still take these concepts and these ideas and apply them to your open house and to your business, okay? Uh, really what I like doing is finding what technology people or teams are using. And if you're not using command, what are the areas that you're missing stuff in? Because then maybe command can help pl uh, plug some of those holes, okay? 
So on the forefront, we've got a variety of different things. If you look over here on our open houses, as far as the, the KW templates go, we've got uh, some social posts. Maybe you want to build up to this, you know, and, and, and like Ash was talking about, maybe a two-week plan or a one-week plan. And on your social media page, your business page, you want to start, you know, uh, throwing out some graphics on there and literally leading up to the open house to get the word out there. So Command does have a variety of templates available. You notice we have social wide, that's for doing ads. So you can run ads uh, to promote your open houses. You have social square, which is your uh, posts. It always tells you the description right here if you click on that category. And then also social stories. Some of the, I, I know that some of you in the office use social stories. Uh, these are more the tall uh, format. Uh, they go well with your phone, but they also on Instagram and Facebook, they disappear after 24 hours. I've had a lot of agents ask me, why do I want to bother using stories? Well, gang, anybody that's familiar with social media, or if you're not, uh, it, it, Facebook, Instagram, it doesn't matter which social media platform, they use what are called algorithms. These algorithms, a lot of people are most familiar with the Facebook one because you'll hear, oh, well, Facebook only puts your posts on like your top 25 or 30 friends that you're currently interacting with based on their algorithm. Same thing on Instagram, okay? So the cool thing about the stories, stories do disappear in 24 hours. However, it breaks outside of your algorithm. I always challenge agents to literally post the same exact post on, on your regular wall as a regular uh, social media feed uh, post and then post the same exact thing on your stories and I guarantee you, gang, when you look at your stories, you're going to see the people that have looked at it or maybe hearted it, liked it, commented, et cetera, um, that, that you're going to see an entirely different audience. Okay? And, and just to add to that, um, I, I was a big proponent of going into uh, Facebook and just showing people how active I am and telling a story. I ended up uh, getting a listing off a friend of mine who apologized that didn't list with me at the very beginning. Um, saying, oh, look, I've been this friend of this person, blah, 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 and uh, look, I hope you can bring a buyer. And I said, that's great. That's great. Not a problem. If In the future, if you want to do something else with me, that's great. Three months later, he came to me and he goes, oh, Ash, geez, I see on Facebook how hard you work on weekends. You do the, you do the open houses. They're successful. Um, I'm not happy with my agent. Uh, I'm about to give him the sack. Can I interview you? And I said, sure. I said, when you've uh, discontinued uh, your contract with him, uh, please, uh, I'd love to have a conversation with you. Later, uh, we have the conversation. Um, we then held it off the market for 30 days to get the days off market back to zero. Uh, I then advertised for three open houses that first week, a Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, we actually had a contract, uh, a full uh, offered price on the Wednesday before the open house. And this was a home at $615,000 in Olentangy schools. So this person had seen how hard working I was by just me telling a story and then thought, wow, I'll give Ashley a try and in contract the first week. So by posting those Facebooks on open houses and tell a story, that's the main thing. Everyone can get a, get in contract in one week, can do this, can do that. But if you're telling a story the whole time, like David says, um, that will add a strong benefit to you being shown as the smart real estate agent when it comes, especially to technology. But you're working, you're 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 working smarter, not harder. I'm sorry, I don't mean myself. <laughs> Thanks. Like Ash brings up a great point, guys. The, the, one of the other things that I've heard before uh, when I talked to another agent about social media and talking about these stories specifically, um, a lot of people will use their, their agent, their solo agent Facebook business page or their team page specifically just for all their business. They keep all their personal stuff separate. So if you have not engaged in these Facebook or Instagram stories yet, uh, you can actually put these stories on your personal Facebook page. We, I've had agents come back and said, I have friends that I've known for years that didn't even realize that I was a real estate agent, did the same thing. Oh my gosh, I should have come to you for business. I totally forgot. Um, so, uh, because again, remember, it breaks outside that normal, normal algorithm that social media uses and hits an audience that you normally or typically would not hit, okay? So those are the social media ones, gangs. Uh, getting into what uh, Ash was talking about here, here are some of the examples of the door hangers. Uh, that you could do if you're going to walk the neighborhoods and leave some print stuff. 
Uh, I am going to have a totally separate class on all of the print materials that we can do here uh, this summer. So stay, stay in tune for that. Uh, here are a variety of the flyer uh, templates that are available. We've got about 12 of them in there as well. There's other things, trifolds, bifolds, I'll just quickly go through here uh, so you guys can see them. Postcards, more flyers in different formats, bifolds, trifolds, and your standard postcard as well. So on the forefront of that open house, there's an enormous amount of stuff that you can do, both print and in social media, to prep for and get ready for that ocean uh, uh, open house. <laughs> Yeah. So then on the on the Thursday, um, I do a total market overview around the open house. Um, I um, uh, in doing that, it's more like a CMA I'm doing, and I like to have that sheet with me when I'm actually in the open house on the weekend. I usually update it on a sun, uh, on a uh, Saturday morning, and I do make Thursday my uh, social media day. Uh, on the team, we've got a highly efficient uh, social media uh, agent with uh, Katie. She does everything excellent. Um, she puts it to our business page. Um, yeah, we've, we've got many followers there, but as David was alluding, I, I do have many um, personal people that aren't there. Uh, like I think I've got uh, 1,500 personal friends, and I think out of that 200 are on the business. So by me sharing it back to my own personal page, I'm telling a, um, I actually put a story in as well. I just don't share it. I always tell a story about something about the house that's attractive or something in the area or something like that. So I always publicize it with a further bit of story. Um, so then on that Thursday, that's when I do the door knock. Um, I generally make it a minimum of uh, 20 on the opposite side of the road and 20 um, on this side of the road. Um, with those fl door flyers um, outside of COVID, yes, I do door knock and I try and have a conversation. And I just say uh, it would be great to see you at the open house. Um, so then, and then at the same time, uh, through command, you can push, push out to your database with the tags. If you know of anyone that's a buyer in that, uh, in that subdivision or that school district, um, you can invite them out um, through uh, email um, or through their tags on command. Okay, so then on the on the Friday, um, that's, the, that's a, these are actually some of the social media pages that uh, Katie has done, um, especially like when I'm doing two or four open houses on the weekend. It shows that I'm a full time agent. Uh, I tell the story of a full time agent. And as we all know, in this market, being a part time agent is harder than ever. So when you can tell us a story of being a full time agent, and how hard you're working, especially when you're doing that inventory work around those open houses, you can always tell a story about one of your open houses. So that's the, they're the social media pages that are pushed out. Uh, so then Friday is my sort of my day, and my free day, catch up. If I do have any buyers or anything, uh, yeah, that's the day I go out and do it. But uh, on a 14 day, a seven day continual you need to come up for air one day and I try and leave Friday as free as possible. Okay, so Saturday, um, I put signs for both days. If I'm doing the same house, my open houses are 11 to 1 and 2 to 4. You'll see where I've done 10.30 to 1.30 and 1.30 to 4.30. I never rush to an open house. I want to be there early, especially in today's market. If you've got an open house starting at 11, you're going to have people waiting there out the front. So you want to be able to engage with them and just have a conversation with them and say, look, the open house isn't ready to 11. Uh, so you do want that. Um, then when it comes to, um, and then even finishing, you don't want to race off at one o'clock. I've got the great story of a condo in Dublin. Um, I thought it may be very hard to sell because it had a lot of um, smoke residue inside it from a heavy smoker. On uh, my first open house, uh, I got 40 people through, no offers, but at five past one, a fellow comes up and goes, oh, am I too late for the open house? And I joked, I said, oh, never too late for an offer. And uh, he turned around and said, oh, I like your style. And um, we, I take him around through the home and everything like that. And he turns around to me and he goes, um, uh, and I've been telling the story about the, the, the home the whole way through, giving him all the information off that questionnaire sheet 
that was uh, printed on the Tuesday. So I know everything about that home, being the local residential specialist. And um, he turns around and he goes, I want to put an offer in through you. And uh, I said, that's great. I can do that for you. So um, that night we were in contract. Um, so I never hurry away from an open house either. So that's why I give myself a one hour break between the two open houses, especially when I was doing four in one weekend. So as far as that goes. Now, the main thing when you look at the, the sign in there, um, I've got a, a sign in um, through command. I actually have a stand that uh, I purchased off Amazon for $89. Um, it's very good, especially when you've got empty homes, um, which we are doing many of with the uh, backlog of uh, COVID. Um, so that's a, a great uh, setup instead of um, having it in your hand or anything like that. Have the, um, the sanitizer below and everything. I always take a, take a uh, tape uh, measure there with me and I always have a, uh, a torch or a... Uh, Sorry, what do we call them? Flashlight. Flashlight. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> In America. So, um, yeah, I always have them because they're those little things that sort of other agents won't be prepared. And if someone says, oh, this is a small bedroom, um, well, do you know the size of uh, your bedroom? Oh, I think it's this. Well, let's measure this. So you're giving them, you're not letting them go without showing that you're the savvy, well, um, uh, um, with the intelligence or with the added value that they're looking for. You're trying to be a problem solver whilst they're inside the open house. So that's one thing there. So yeah, never, never, never move away quickly from your open house. Now, on the back side of that, when they come into my open house, I've got a couple of lines that I say. I generally the first one is um, oh, welcome to uh, welcome to Upper Arlington. Um, well, um, it's a busy day today. Are you looking at many homes today or are you a neighbour? Okay, so that, that question there is leading for yourself that if they're a neighbour, you may want to switch up with a few, further few questions and with telling them a story of how you, strat how you use strategy to get your listing sold. And if you can tell them a good story and engage with them, um, they're interviewing you to list their home, maybe in one month, three months, six months time. Um, if they turn around and they say they're a buyer, well, that's when you go to your inventory. But I always work with the information that I've got to sell my home first, that I've got the open house. Even if it's not my listing, you're going to get the confidence of that agent that you're doing the open house for that they're going to want you to be their open house specialist, especially if they're an individual agent um, that's got other commitments with buyers. Can you do an open house for me on the weekend? Yeah, I can actually do two for you. Oh, that's great. Um, so if you're showing the benefit to the list agent as well, um, that's why I always try and sell the open house I'm in. If by the end of it, about two thirds of the way through, you get the feeling that they're not liking the home, that's when you can switch up to, well, what don't you like about the home? What are you looking for in a home? What, if you found your perfect home, what are the two must-haves? You, you switch up your questioning because then you can go to your inventory in your mind and go, I think I've got an off-market home for you or I think I can get you into a home. I never give the address out straight away. I always say to them, let me get the appointment for you and then I'll give you the address and I will sell you, send you the MLS information because when you walked in, you gave me your email and your phone number and I can get that to you. So David will now tell you about how to set up a landing page. Thanks for that, Ash. Yeah, let me just switch back over here, guys, to command. We've got a couple of classes about this, and uh, honestly, uh, the initial classes that I taught about these landing pages were uh, actually heavily influenced uh, of some of the early on conversations that I had with Ash and just kind of his methods and his style. So uh, here we go, gang. So once again, just very quickly, uh, we're in command again. We're on the very last applet down here on the bottom left. This is your consumer applet. That's where you're going to find your agent site pages, your landing pages, and also your buyers and your sellers guide builders, okay? So we're just going to go ahead and do this from scratch. I'm going to give you a very basic layout, but very similar to what Ash is using. So I'll go up here in the top right and click on the create a new page option. 
I do want this as the landing page. Again, if you're not familiar with them, landing pages, they are separate from your agent site, but the advantage is you can make them for kind of specialty uses like open houses, uh, just listed or a coming soon or an event that you have going on, et cetera. Uh, the other great thing too, is that they provide you with an individual URL. That URL can now be used on all of your other marketing things, your social media posts that you do before the open house, the uh, open house ad that you might run, the email letter that we're going to talk about later in the smart plan. Okay, so I'm going to click on uh, do it as a uh, create a new page as a landing page. Click on create a page and give it just a second there. And what you're going to see is basically you've got an area where you can build out the body of the web page over here on the left hand side. And you've got an option of about 10 different what we call widgets, don't let the tech terms, you know, confuse you, uh, that are basically pre-templated pieces of the web page that we're going to add. So I'm going to build out a basic one, but the first thing I tell everybody to do up here in the upper left-hand corner, I'm going to go ahead and rename this page. And let's just call it uh, Dublin Open House Practice for today, okay? All right, so from these uh, widgets that I've got, the first thing I always like to do is just put on a, a header up there with some basic information. Um, the branded header is just my preferred one. You'll notice if I grab this widget, all I'm doing is clicking and holding my mouse down and I'm just dragging it over to the left of this body area. You're gonna see that green line pop out. Wherever that green line goes, that's where the widget goes. So as I release my mouse, you'll see that uh, the information already pops in and it's already populated with the information from my marketing profile. Now we won't dive into the marketing profile today, but if you have not done your command marketing profile or you haven't touched it in a while, please go to the command settings, check out your marketing profile. That's all your contact info, your headshot photo, uh, you know, all your social media links, et cetera. Uh, anytime you do anything in command, it just pulls that information over so you don't have to repetitively create this stuff, okay? Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add the widget that's called a lead form. Very, very important part. And this is what Ash is utilizing. Notice again, as I move that widget around, wherever the green line goes, that's where the widget goes. And boom, I've got five different fields that are available. Now I've had agents ask this all the time. Can I customize the fields? Like, can I customize what I ask on this questionnaire? So the fields themselves, the, the areas where you're collecting data for right now, no, you cannot. It's first name, last name, email address, phone number, and leave a note, okay? Uh, there is a request into uh, KW Labs uh, to update this so that we can have some more customization. For now, that's your five. That's okay. That's all we need is a name, a phone number, email address, and then you can work with that in command on your smart plans. Um, the leave a note, correct me if I'm wrong, Ash, but Ash had a, a great suggestion on this one when we talked previously. Uh, what he asked everybody to do to say, oh, in the leave a note, will you please let me know how you found out about the open house? This can help you with your lead generation. Uh, did you see it on a Facebook ad? What is on a social media post? Did a, like Ash said, did a neighbor recommend you? Did you just see the sign, et cetera? And the other genius that, that I remember him telling me, and, and of course we're coming out of COVID now, but during COVID, I, I think if he, he kind of had like a two statement uh, thing on his intro to the open house. He said, hey guys, thanks for coming in. Um, due to security purposes, you must sign in. That was the catch all. I've had agents say they've been to open houses where people got by them, uh, that they didn't get signed in or they were using a paper and pencil and they you know, didn't put the right information or didn't sign in whatever. So that makes sure you do it. And then the other thing I thought was great was at the time, hey, we're in COVID right now. We cannot give you, because of COVID, uh, paper materials, handouts. So uh, please sign in on the iPad, which Ash showed you in the cool stand that he got there from Amazon. Uh, and it just literally just like herds everybody at that sign-in screen. Gang, if you don't know this, this sign-in right here, as soon as they do that, they are automatically captured into your command account as a contact. That is the power of this landing page. That's why this is so important to use. For those of you that are using other, you know, it, it's okay if you're using, you know, Wix or something else for, you know, your, your team page or your solo agent page. I get that. But if you are not utilizing a lead capture form like this, you're doing yourself a disservice. It takes those contacts and puts them right into command. I'm going to prove it to you. And then we're going to take that later on. We're going to put it into a smart plan. Okay. Uh, the last thing, guys, because I want this to be a multi-function page for you. You don't have to do this if all you want is a sign-in page. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag over the widget that says listing. Okay, and as I scroll down, of course, it's not the address that we're going to do, but it shows you basic information, 
uh, the main property photo and address. That's all the information there from the MLS, including the photos, et cetera. And then also a market snap. I'm gonna drag that over there and release that one. And that's gonna give you some uh, market information. And then the very last thing we'll throw on there, of course, is your legal footer at the very bottom. And that just personalizes that with all of your uh, market center information, any of your disclaimers, et cetera, that you've, again, you've got set up in your marketing profile, okay? So again, that's it. That's as easy as it is to build out. The only thing that I need to do now is kind of personalize each one of these widgets. So now that I've got five of them pulled over there, I'm gonna click on this button down here on the very bottom that says configure widgets, okay? You'll notice that five steps pop out just like we showed, and I'm gonna click on the first one and now I can just edit my information, okay? So open house, I do wanna point out that is limited. This is your title up at the top. Uh, it is limited to 30 characters. So I'll just say, you know, uh, welcome to our open house. Hopefully that's there. That's close enough. Okay. Again, a lot of this information is pulled from your marketing profile. So there's my headshot. Uh, if you like the dashes, you know, in your uh, phone numbers here, because sometimes that does not get pulled over from the marketing profile. You can put the dashes in there, your email address. I don't, I'm not on a team, so I don't have a team logo, uh, but that one would automatically pull that over. Okay. So I'll click on save and apply. I, my motto is save often as you're working on this stuff. Heaven forbid command crash on you. Uh, I'm the tech director and you think I'd have less tech problems than you guys. I think I have more than everybody actually, uh, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, so that, that widget is good to go. That's our branded header. Now notice up on the top here, branded header is what I'm working on on the top right. Over on the side here, I've got steps one through five. It's literally just walking me through those five widgets, gang. So I'm just gonna arrow over to the next one. Here's our lead form, okay? So instead of interested, let's talk. Uh, let's put something like, please sign in with your contact information. Whoops, I could type today. And again, I'll hit save and apply. Again, we can't update those fields, but that's changing the title up at the top for me there for our sign in, okay? So that one's good to go. I'll come up here to these navigation arrows again, go to step three. That's the listing. Now, I, I have, do you have one? Actually, I have one that I use for an example that I can pull up if you want. Or do you? 3259 Canyon. Oh, sorry. Canyon. Is that Dublin? Two o'clock. Is that it right there? Yeah. All right. So, gang, this is the cool thing. You can select by the property address over here. Okay. Um, if for some reason it's not showing up in the MLS, I just want to show this menu. You can actually go to the MLS number, or you can also look it up by your KWSL uh, or KWLS ID. Hmm, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and select this one. And don't worry if command kind of freezes there. Sometimes it takes a second to like pull all that information from the MLS. Uh, I historically see my computer get a little slow right then. But then you'll see I've got the information here. There's the price. I've got all of the listing photos pulled in from the MLS. Uh, we'll just change this for the main photo and apply that. There we go. And then again, you'll see all the basic information is pulled in from the MLS, okay? Including all the photo libraries, details, features, et cetera. Okay, and a location map, all right? So that was widget number three, that's our listing. Then I'll click on the next arrow and we go to the market, uh, the market snap, okay? And, oh, do you remember the zip code on that one? Uh, we'll just, we'll, I'll use mine, 43026. That's Hillier, but hey, we'll use it. Uh, <laughs> and we'll just say uh, neighborhood, if I could type again, uh, information, okay? All right, so I've got the postal code in there. Hmm. No, there it goes. I was about to say, normally, yeah, as soon as you put the postal code in, it allows you to select from the different areas. I'm in like the Hilliard Rome area. So uh, let's scroll down and see if it finds it. Yeah, there we go, Hilliard Rome. And save and apply and it'll pull in. Let me scroll down so you can see it. Pass the MLS info, location map. And there's the Hilliard Rome area. I, I know that Raising Cane's chicken fingers is literally two blocks from my house. So I know that this is correct. Okay, <laughs> again, up to the right-hand side and click over to the last widget, which is just our uh, legal footer. So again, all this information is being pulled from your marketing profile. So it's got all my social media links, my DBA logo. Again, if I wanna be consistent uh, here with my uh, telephone formats, I'll go ahead and put those dashes in there. Just easier for people to read, I think too. So, okay. And then click on save and apply. 
And then from there, gang, we're basically done. You've created a landing page for a sign-in and to use for follow-up actions or, or pre-open house actions. I could do one of two things right now. I could, excuse me, I could save this landing page. So if you're a team member, you're, you're a rainmaker, somebody else needs to review it, then you just save it and do it. I'm going to go ahead and publish this thing, which is going to put it live on the web. Command's going to ask me, are you sure you want to do this? Yes. Go ahead and update this and put that thing out there. And boom, it bounces you back to your consumer applet. Uh, I don't know why it goes back to agent sites, but there we go. Dublin Open House Practice. I've got a URL if I wanted to. I could come over here and I could edit it if I needed to make changes. I could change the URL, which would allow me to put this last area there. I actually do recommend that because part of search engine optimization is your URL. So you could even make it open house, you know, 3259. I forget the address I got already, sorry. <laughs> um, but whatever it is, that would help in your search engine optimization as well, gang. Okay. So, but just let me click on that. It'll pull it up here. And there you go. You have a sign-in sheet up at the top there. You can put just like Ash did with his uh, iPad and the stand. Uh, and again, it's got all the housing information. While they're signing in, again, they're probably not going to read this information, right, as they're coming in the open house. But again, I wanted to show you how to make a multi-purpose page because on the forefront actions or the follow-up actions, now you can email them the link and include that in there, okay? All right. Back to you there, buddy. All right. Uh, we'll keep moving through this rather quickly because I've got through sort of the stage, first first week stage of setting up, but then in the open house as well, we've got to try and get our KW app in their phone. Um, now, I know um, some people aren't using it. Some people are using it. Um, I try to get it into their hand, especially in COVID, so they can see all the information on that house. I don't hand out any brochures in an open house. I've got all the information in my hand. I've got it in a folder. And then at the same time, the information on the house is in, the, in your KW app. Now you can, you can do one of two ways. Um, I think David's actually refined it down to yeah. the best way to do it. Um, so I will, when, so when you're inside the house, you can turn around to the person and say, especially if they ask, um, can, can I have a brochure? Uh, just during COVID and everything, um, we've uh, realized uh, we shouldn't be handing that out. Um, I will uh, text or email you uh, my KW app, which has all the information on it. You'll be able to see all the information on this house um, that is listed on the MLS. And this is far more accurate than any other third party engine that you may have already as your app. And they generally say, saying, oh, yeah, OK, especially if they're interested in the house. Yes, please. Can I get that information? And so I would pass off to David um, how to share that with people. And uh, they will then have your KW app and you hopefully will then be branded as their KW agent. And through command, David will show you how you can then um, uh, be their agent. You can see when they're clicking on. Um, on, on the KW app and what they're looking at. All right, guys, All right. this is the part where I get excited. I'm, I'm a tech guy, so I just love it when we do cool tech stuff like this. So I've, I've actually logged in on both my accounts. I'm logged in on my phone and I'm logged in on my laptop. And what I've done here is uh, the, the first method that Ash used to uh, share his KW app with me. And it, just like you said, I'll show you exactly how to do that um, uh, from the uh, open house was to do it via text, okay? Uh, there's a couple different ways you can do it, but what you'll notice is that I got a text, a couple different texts here from Ash. The first one underneath there where it says share property is where he went to the property. This is in your branded KW app, okay? If you do not have your KW app branded yet, please get a hold of me. I will walk you through how to do that process. It's actually very simple. Um, the, the KW app is our consumer version uh, just like uh, Zillow, just like Realtor.com or, you know, Apartments.com have their app, et cetera. It's where your clients can go through, search for homes, save homes, do all kinds of different things in there. Um, but the great thing about the branded app is if you have them download your version, you get notifications as your clients are doing things. So if I was on there this weekend and I was searching homes and maybe I saved a couple of favorites or whatever, Ash in his command would get some notifications. I'll show you where those pop up that say David Satterfield saved a $400,000 home in Hilliard, you know, with the address, et cetera. 
So uh, a conversation we're having the other day, it came up that, it, that it's great because it really turns your cold calls to your clients and, and your sphere of influence into warm calls. Because I always tell everybody, don't stalk people on social media personally. That's creepy. Okay. <laughs> but when you have a branded app that tracks them and it kind of gives you some info about what they're doing in the background, that, that's awesome. Okay. So again, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click where it says kwri.app.link. And you notice there is a default message uh, in there as well that gets sent to the person that you text. I'm going to go ahead and click on that link. What it's going to do is it's going to bounce me over to my app store. Now, I, I am on an iPhone, just so everybody knows. If you guys are on Androids, obviously, you're not going to see the, uh, the uh, iTunes store. You're going to see uh, your store. And if they did not have the link or, or they, excuse me, they did not have the app yet, it would ask them to download that app. Okay. I personally do have the app, so I'm just going to go ahead and click on open. And it's going to take you to the app and it's going to show the area that I've been looking in or the one that, that Ash sent me. You can see that's actually the literally right on the border of Dublin uh, and Hilliard on that map. So the great thing about Ash sending me this from his app, it's already branded. Notice I can click on any of these listings. Okay. So there's one in Dublin. And when I pull it up, Ash Gale is showing as the agent. Okay. If they just go and they download the generic app and they do not get your branded app, it's going to have a button that says, go find an agent, okay, rather than having you on there. And obviously, we want you on there. So just to prove the point, I'll, I'll click on a couple more here. Uh, there's another one, looks like some land that's got ash on there. And again, I'll, I'll go down here kind of into Hilliard, just look in a slightly different area to south. There's a home. Boom, ash, every single time, every single thing I look at, ash, 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 okay? If you are not using your branded app, you're, do, you're doing yourself a disservice, gang, okay? And again, as Ash said, uh, even coming out of COVID, this is still, I mean, we're, we're not totally out of it yet. So it's still okay not to do printed materials other than like the, the uh, flyers that he mentioned or the door hangers that you might want to do, et cetera, during the open house rather ask them hey you know as you're building those telling those stories and building those relationships ask them about the properties you could even pull it up on your phone show it to them on your app and then say oh would you like me to share this with you what's your number okay so to do that gang there's a there's a couple different ways again i want to show you the difference if i'm in the property like you guys see now there is a share button there if you use the share button in the property page, again, this is not on me at KWRI, we're trying to get this fixed, that will send them to the generic app. You do not want that, okay? You don't want them to get the generic app where it says find an agent, not ask your agent with Ash or you on there, okay? What you wanna do, I'm gonna go ahead and close this house down, okay? So I can get back to the menu. If you look on the very bottom, your menu, right? You've got search, feed, guide, saved, and more. You as the agent would go down and click on more on the bottom right. And when I click on that, you're going to get a menu here and right down towards the bottom, you're going to see share the KW app, okay? When I click on that, it's just gonna give me my share menu, just like you would normally see in your phone. That's my lovely wife right there. So if I wanted to send this to my wife, uh, to my kids, there's Ash, uh, you know, you've got AirDrop, social media, some other things on there that you would normally see. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just send it back to Ash. Actually, I'm gonna send it to my buddy, James. That's my best friend in Tucson. And I'm going to go ahead and just send him that link. He's probably going to text me in about five seconds and say, what are you sending me? <laughs> but gang, that is how you go and you get the branded app, which again, I'll show you the difference here. If the text you send comes out as kw.com, that's the generic link. It's not your branded one. If you send them from the menu, your branded link, it will say kwri.app.link. Okay. All right. Get back to our PowerPoint here. All right, there you go. Lynn. All right, so that's um, day. That's that's week one. Now, at the same time, when these come straight into your um, when these come straight into your uh, command, okay, you've got the opportunity of adding them straight to a smart plan with a tag. Um, you do have to do that manually. Um, at the moment, um, I'm actually sending people that I get home that afternoon and I send out a whole lot of information, which is that questionnaire sheet. It's the RPD. It's any other information I know on that home. If they don't like that home, I then send them a, uh, a CMA and a, a number of other homes in the area. Now, I do it of active homes 
and homes that have sold. Because when you show them homes that have sold, you're all of a sudden able to have a conversation to them about how to put an offer forward. Because you'll see, look, that's 5% over in this area. It's 10% over in this area. That home was had a wow factor. It sold for 80,000 more. So I just don't send them the MLS listings of um, that home. If they like that home, yes, I still try and push it. If they don't, I try and move on to something else in that area. If I've got any off-market opportunities in that area and I couldn't have a good conversation with them, I'll bring that up when I'm sharing it. But I really, I with, especially with off-markets, I never share... Um, the address with anyone until I've got the appointment. So that's that's sort of the the the, the Saturday and the Sunday of uh, of my um, open houses, um, getting that information out, um, and, and then it's on the Monday, um, following following up with um, following up with the the smart plan and everything. So I'll pass that over to David um, because uh, we don't have much time left, and the smart plan is an important part of uh, the follow-up, which is the all-important, because what I, I do have to say, my first listing I ever got was out of an open house. It was a Dublin uh, condo. I uh, had a couple that had a home to sell in Brookside. Uh, I just gave them all the information on the, uh, the house um, with the, uh, the follow-ups. I then followed up with uh, two phone calls that week and some more information. They never answered or responded to anything. They then rang me up on the Friday and they said, Ash, um, wow, thanks for the follow-up. Sorry we haven't got back to you. Look, we're not interested in that condo, but uh, look, we'd like to have a conversation with yourself about listing our home because um, we can see that you're uh, active and you're really on top of your game with your strategies that you use. So um, when could we have an interview with you? So that's how I got my first listing out of an open house. So... David will give you uh, now an overview of the smart plans on command um, that obviously weren't around two and a half years ago and how these uh, will pop up in your task bar um, to prompt you to do the follow-ups uh, when you uh, switch command on each day. Awesome. Thanks again, Ash. Um, gang, I, I, last night I actually built out this landing page of practice and I did practice with just entering some of those contacts in there. So I do want to show you how this works. Uh, kind of from the ground up with those contacts. So again, remember, they get captured automatically into your command. So notice, I kind of, <laughs> I'm not an agent, so all my names are fictitious. So I just went through a Christmas here. I've got Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, and Comet Reindeer that all signed in at the open house, okay? Uh, you can see that I've got this uh, just uh, uh, sorted by the created column so that I could see who the most recent people are, okay? So if you just had the open house and this is either while you're winding down that night or the next day when you're doing your contact information, you can see that those people popped in there, okay? So that's where the contacts go. Uh, what we wanna do is to create a smart plan for some follow-up actions for them. Uh, you'll notice that's your fourth applet down. The smart plans looks like the little diploma checklist there. Um, you've got two areas there. You've got my smart plans and then, like Ash was saying, uh, this just happened last year at Mega Camp uh, towards the end of the year. They came out with what's called the Smart Plan Library. And now any KW agent can create a smart plan, upload it. And when you come to the library area, you've got four sections. The top featured, which is, uh, looks like eight of them. The KW Top 10. There's the top rated ones. There's 757 smart plans in there now. And then the new ones, which are literally, as people create them, they'll pop in there. Looks about 50 of them. So, so we're pushing over 800 smart plans here, gang. You could always, if you didn't want to take the time to do this from scratch, but I'm going to show you how, I could just go in here and I could search for open house. And there are 71 different versions of an open house smart plan. You can literally just click on these add a smart plan and it'll put it into your area after you download it. Uh, if you're not sure uh, which one you want, take a look at things like this. It tells you how many steps, how long the duration is, that's how many days long it is. And then how many touches to your client? And these run the gambit. I've seen some that are as simple as three or four steps with, you know, uh, just a couple, three uh, touches. Uh, some of these in here, if I scroll down, I think there's some that are, you know, 45 day longs with, with 15 touches in them. So don't worry if it seems like a lot. You can always click on this view steps button down here in the lower left hand uh, side. And it shows you kind of the layout. Okay, this is a text. There's one day delay. There's a touch base, a delay, a phone call, et cetera. 
the cool thing about being in this preview window, when I pause my mouse cursor over the text message, it tells me the text script. Okay. If I go down to the phone call, it tells me, hey, what, what the phone call is set up for. There's the, again, the script for the text. If there, is there an email one in here? I'm wondering. Touch, touch, touch. No, not on that one. Okay. But that way you can kind of determine whether that meets what you want for your open house. Okay. So certainly use the library. That would save you even more time. But if you can't find one, gang, it's very easy to do these from scratch. Okay. I'm going to come over here on the top right in our smart plans, click on the create button. Again, I'll, I'll, just so I can, uh, you know, stay consistent, uh, Dublin open house practice for today. These do need to have uh, unique names on the smart plan. So uh, if I could type again, prac as a practice. All righty. And it's going to take me over to the edit smart plan area. Now, same thing as the web design. You kind of have this blank area on the left, and then they're not widgets here, but we have actions. And basically, you just click on these to create it. So I'm going to do a very generic one. Maybe the one that Ash does or you decide will be different. But let's say after the open house, I want to send a text and say, thanks for coming to the open house. How did you like it? Maybe two days later, because I don't want to barrage them, I'm going to send an email address that I've already created a template and just send them that link with all the information that I had on that open house webpage. Then maybe wait three or four days. And then maybe that next weekend, I'll start hitting up with phone calls and see about building relationships, okay? So all you have to do on the right-hand side is to click on them. So send SMS, that's the first one. As soon as I click on it, the area pops up over here for you to go ahead and edit, just like we did the web page. Who is this from? Uh, you should have Twilio, by the way, set up on your uh, marketing profile and command if you're going to use text. The difference between static and dynamic, static is just text, dynamic, you can include pictures, okay? So I'll send that, thanks for coming text. Then I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna set a delay. What did I say, two days on that one? I'll just come over here and click on two days. Then I wanna maybe send out that email. I'll click on send email. I would, uh, simple is just text. Designs allows me to go into my designs and choose one. And I think I already have one set up for today, if I, memory serves. Uh, my designs, open house practice, boom, there we go. All right, so you can kind of see the example I did of the open house. This is the follow-up email that I'm gonna send them with all the information. I think it's a different address, but you guys get the idea, okay? And then again, I'm gonna go ahead and set another delay there. Uh, what I'd say, maybe three or four days. Again, just don't wanna barrage them all at the same time. And then I would set up a phone call to do my follow-up with them. You know, say, hey, are they interested in the house? Or like Ash said, start telling their stories, building a relationship. Are they looking at the time? Maybe they know uh, friends, you can get referrals, et cetera, gang. So you would go ahead and you would set all this up. And the key to this thing, okay, is I don't think it's gonna let me save it because I didn't fill anything in. We don't have the time for that. Let me go back here real quick, because what I do want to show you, hopefully I have it set up in this one. No, no, hang on, gang. Sorry. And I got one of them on here. Close, close, and follow up, open house. It might be this one. The real, oh, sorry. The real power behind this is now you can use what's called a tag trigger. Yeah, there we go. So once you actually fill out all that information, so again, we'll, we'll have a class on how to do these in detail uh, here soon. But once you have it saved, have all those steps filled out, you can add what's called a trigger event. And the trigger event can be the tags that you put in your contacts. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a trigger event. I'm going to, uh, 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 if I had one set up, I, I think Ash had some suggestions, like what I've been recommending. Uh, to the agents is call your tag like open house with the address. Ash had some great suggestions, uh, maybe to use the school district or the neighborhood. What's that? Subdivision. Yeah, subdivision that they're in, et cetera. Uh, that's a great way to do it as well. So for now, gang, um, I'm just going to go with one. I think I have. Let me go look down here. I still have it in there. Mm, no, it's not there yet. All right, for now, I'm, ju I'm just gonna grab this one here for Sphere just so we can have it and I'll choose that trigger, okay? We're, we're just trying to learn the process. Sorry that I didn't have that one set up, um, but I'm gonna add that tag. That's a pre-existing tag that I already have on at least one contact, okay? So now that I have that tag set up and I save this again, check out what I can do over here with those contacts that we imported from the open house, right? Because you wanna reach out to these guys quick. Remember, as soon as the smart plan kicks in, it's going to send off that first text or that text message, right? Because I didn't put a delay. 
So coming back to my contacts, I've got all those contacts. I've got Dasher. I'm going to select them all. Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet. Okay, didn't have time for all 12 Rangers, sorry. Uh, but you guys get the idea. Um, as soon as I select multiple contacts, I get this option that says select bulk action. And one of the bulk actions I can do is add bulk tag. Okay. So now it's going to ask me, well, which tag would you like to give to these ones? I'm going to scroll down. I believe we used a sphere for our example, right? I'm going to click on that and say submit. Okay. Go ahead and refresh that. Should pull up all those guys. There we go. Now notice all of those contacts are marked as sphere now. Again, remember that would be your open house dash, whatever you want to put in for your description. But gang, the fact that I just tagged them and I use that same exact tag as the smart plan trigger, this will automatically kick in the smart plan and that seven day plan that I just created for all of my follow up actions initiates. These guys will immediately get that Twilio text. Two days later, they're going to get the email that I set up. Three days later, I'm going to get a prompt to call these guys up, okay? And that's when I'm going to start in on my phone calls and starting to build those relationships, gang. So that's kind of the real power behind the captures from the landing page, how you get them automatically in your contacts, but then how to put them in a smart plan and kind of automate that process. I, I think Ash mentioned it before, how to turn your regular old database into what we refer to as a smart database or an automatic database, okay? All right. All right, gang, um, does anybody, I'm gonna, let me go ahead and stop my sharing there. And uh, we're just gonna kind of open up the floor before we wrap things up here. And does anybody have any questions? Uh, I don't see anything in the chat queue, uh, but feel free to come off of mute. We'll give you guys a second. If anybody has any questions, feel free to, to throw those out to myself or to Ash. A lot of great info. Thank you, Michelle. Michelle says a lot of great information. I appreciate that. Uh, hopefully that helps you guys out. All right, gang. Well, if nobody has any questions, well, hang on, Ash. Got some here. Hold on. I suppose, I suppose the last thing to to look at with the uh, the smart plans is when you've got the uh, the tasks bar. The smart plan, I believe, automates into the task bar. So when when you need to make a phone call on that day, or even if you've got them on a quarterly um, drop campaign that um, you've sold their home last year or whatnot always go back and look at that task bar the first thing you do each morning to see what tasks you must do to keep up with your database because if you're not keeping up with your database um, it's not going to be working for you you need to you need to know where you're at with your database and how to keep touching it so to look at that task bar first is all important the second thing I, uh, I always look at importantly is um, my opportunities, but that's for another class. But yeah, to look at that task bar to, to, to do your follow-ups from the open house, that keeps you on point with that for the following week. Yeah, great. And thanks for bringing that up, Ash. Uh, again, I, I shared my screen again just so everybody can see. Uh, the task area is your third applet down. So anytime that you have those prompts to yourself uh, to make those phone calls, or if you come over, some people like to work literally out of your database. So give me a second here. So maybe comment, you know, it's time for me, or I'll say Dasher, he was the first guy. If Dasher was the first guy that I wanted to look at and I came over here, I've got all his information, my timeline and everything I've done with Dasher, the opportunity, smart plans. And if I was in Dasher's uh, contact card and I had a prompt to call him, that would show up here under my task as well, okay? And hang on, Ash has got something I want to show you guys. Now, also, when you get your KW app downloaded with them, you will see that your KW app will actually put in the contacts what they're looking at and when they looked at it. So you have that as um, in your database forever of what they're looking at. And my, my phone calls to the people, I never talk to them about what they've looked at or anything. I just ask them... Uh, um, hi Dasha, how are you going? Um, wow, what, what a great weekend it was with the Memorial Tournament. Did you get a chance to go there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hopefully they ask you a thing about real estate and you can turn around to them, back to them and say, uh, do you, uh, I, I have a joke. Uh, I say, do you need to use and abuse me for real estate in any way? Um, I always like to make them uh, laugh a little bit and make it light humoured. 
and um, they then will hopefully lead you into the conversation about the home that they've been looking at. But in that uh, right-hand column, you will get a list of what they looked at and when they're looking at it. All right, awesome. Thanks, Ash. And, and that's why I love this global perspective, guys. So you can see the practical side and, and the tech side, uh, especially with Ashes. Uh, like I, I try and throw some dad jokes into my uh, my training, so it, it cracks me up when Ash has a good humor like that. So, uh, Christine, this is so helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. We appreciate the comments. Michelle, I appreciate you coming as well. Uh, again, if nobody has any other questions, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, again, this, this is being recorded, so it'll be on our YouTube channel. I uh, usually try and post those about two to three days. It uh, takes us to download, then upload it again and edit it, et cetera. So uh, it should be on there by the end of this week or no later than the weekend. So thank you, everybody, for coming. Thanks, thank you, Ash, for a great session. Uh, we're going to be looking to do more collaborative types of training for this this summer uh, to just put more value in your guys' hands. If you ever have any suggestions or desires for training, feel free to hit me or one of the leadership staff up, and we would love to put together uh, whatever it is that would help you guys out with your business, okay? All right, so thank you guys, take care and have a great rest of your week.